Hi, this is Paul Colmsey from Seven Sigma. Just recording a short video. Purpose of this video is to show you a couple of the hidden capabilities of Power Action Flow. Uh, I have a scenario here that I think is kind of cool, and I've also made up a new word, so therefore I uh, absolutely had to record a video to show you. So first up, let me show you the scenario. So I'm just going to open up a Power App that I prepared earlier. Now, the way this Power App works is it allows you to choose a document library in SharePoint. It will then give you a listing of all of the PDFs in that document library and allow you to then view and examine the PDF on the other side. So let me just press play and show you. So you can imagine field workers having to examine documentation on an iPad just really quickly and easily. Um, so what I've got here is a drop down list here. You can see that it's actually already wired up to a site collection and there's a bunch of document libraries, including some back end libraries that I would filter out. But for the purposes of what we're doing, I've uploaded some PDFs into the shared document library. So if I click that, you will see a whole bunch of PDFs and I can then just simply click on one and it will then change the PDF that's loaded on the fly, which is kind of cool. So all of this, all of these documents are sitting in SharePoint. And if you haven't seen the PDF control that's built into this thing, it's actually not bad. You've got search, um, you've got zoom, and you can sort of um, navigate your, your way around. Um, now, let's say I'm not interested in that library. I want to go to a different library. So I can go to one called doclib2, where I've also dumped some stuff. Again, I get a directory listing, and I can then choose and click on a PDF to bring it up. So there's an example. Okay, so next question I guess you want to know is how this is done. So let me go into edit mode and show you some of the bits behind the scenes. First up, let's go and have a look at the data sources. Um, the new version of Power Apps has this rules capability, so the data tab has moved. The best way at the moment if you want to see data sources is to click view, go data sources. And you can see here that I have a data source and it's called folder handler. So what's going on with this, and it's a custom data source by the way, so what's going on with this thing? Well basically what Folder Handler does, if I was to show you the on start method of this screen, on start, <clears throat> I am basically, uh, I've created a custom connector called Folder Handler and I pass it a document library and a folder. And together, um, this goes off to Flow, Flow gets a listing of all of the document libraries um, in the site and puts it into a variable I've created called library list. And if you can go and have a look at that now, file collections, and there is my library list just to show you all the goodies. On the Flow side of things, if I actually just come back out here, you see that I've got a flow here called return the contents of a specified document library. So if we have a look at how that one works, it's a request response trigger flow and what I'm basically doing is um, I actually have told it to expect there's my two parameters library and folder and I've said yep they're a string um, so all I basically do is using compose I extract the library specifically the value of whatever the library is um, SharePoint has a list folder action and so I can then basically give it a site collection and pop in my um, library. And I could put a slash and then put the folder in there um, as well. And then I take the, all of that information and I send it back to Power Apps um, as a response. And so that comes back as JSON. So the contents of that body, which is the output of list folder, is all of the stuff that you are now seeing in here, in this collection called LibList. So that in effect is how I was able to basically create a flow that returns a, almost a, a directory listing or a file listing of what's in a document library. So the next part of Power Apps is this idea. So how is this whole PDF thing happening? Well, that's where another flow comes in, although I don't need to do it as a connector. So this is kind of interesting. Um, if I go into the properties of the PDF handler and click on the control, you can actually see that I have a hard-coded URL in here. It's going off to a URL, and all I'm doing is at the very end, I'm, a I'm adding to it whatever has come back from this gallery. So in other words, gallery1.selected.path, path is one of the columns that came back 
from um, when I enumerated a document library and it has the full path to each of these files. So what I'm doing is I'm tacking it to the end of this URL and I'm sending that off and like magic back comes the file. So how's that working? Well if we have a look at another flow, I have a flow which I have called a Floxy because it's kind of like flow being a reverse proxy. Now the issue with content in SharePoint um, up until very recently is in Flow if you try to pull a URL from SharePoint, Flow would do it anonymously and then it would fail because SharePoint of course needs authentication. And so things like using galleries to display pictures out of SharePoint um, was actually difficult to do. They've actually fixed that but um, there are still some scenarios where we need to do a bit of trickery and this is one of them. So what I've done is this, my Floxy flow, if I go and edit it, it's a HTTP request flow, okay, so it's just like the other ones, but keen-eyed observers might be wondering, well, if you've got a HTTP request flow in here, why am I not seeing another data source for Floxy? Well, the answer to that is, when you do a flow, if, um, under advanced options, it defaults to being a, a post flow, but you can also make it a get flow. And so what this thing is doing is saying, and when it's a get flow, it literally is just like any other URL. You send data to it, you get data back. Uh, you're not posting anything to it. And so what I'm doing is, so I'm doing a get against this URL. The first thing I have to do is grab, and I'm using a trigger expression here. So I'm saying, from the trigger, from this HTTP call, grab me the, the parameter called item URL. Okay, now there is a helper function, you don't have to use trigger, there's actually trigger outputs, so you can go trigger outputs queries item URL. Um, I just like using trigger as a base because I just like to reinforce the hierarchy of data that's coming from my trigger. So I'm going with item URL. So with that item URL, there is a SharePoint uh, action in Flow called get file content, um, sorry, no, that's my name for it. Basically it's a SharePoint action that allows you to um, uh, uh, grab a file by path. So you basically give a URL, you get a file back. And so I'm taking then this, the output of this compose, I'm putting here into the, the file path, okay, and that returns the file itself. Which all I'm doing then is in my response, um, you can actually ignore the content type for now, that's an anomaly, it shouldn't be there, but the file content that comes out of this flow is being sent back as a response. And so the net effect of that, if we go back to my flow, is what I have to do is actually, sorry, not going back to the flow. If I take this URL and copy it to the clipboard, exactly as is, which is generated when I made this flow, uh, if I then pop it into my um, PDF uh, control, as in the documents property, um, I can then pass it, see there's that item URL equals, and then there's a path. So that gets passed in to Flow. Flow then, Flow gets the item URL through here, goes to the actual library, finds it, and sends it back. Now in effect, this is kind of like a reverse proxy, hence why I called it a Floxy. It's not a Flow, it's not a proxy, it's a Floxy. Um, that's because anytime you use a um, connection in Flow, of course, you have to already have an authenticated connection. So this is actually doing the doing it as me. This is my um, my current account that I'm logging into to connect to SharePoint. Whereas when I call this URL, it's still doing it anonymous. So basically, you can make an anonymous call. Um, it hits the Flow endpoint, and Flow goes and gets the file on your behalf. Now, there are all sorts of security implications here because, for example, I don't know if you want this um, URL to be seen by the world because it provides a window to pretty much um, grab content out of uh, the library or the SharePoint site collection that it's bound to, or site that it's bound to. Um, so that you definitely have to take some precautions with using this, um, and I actually suspect this problem will be solved in time anyway. But if you had a desperate need where you had like a line of business system that required authentication, and because Power Apps doesn't have the means to make an authenticated query, the other alternative you can do 
is actually get Flow to do the authentication bit and you can then just return the response back to Power Apps. Um, if you really wanted to have a bit of um, additional, I guess, layers of um, security, you could possibly do things like look at this HTTP request and look at the headers and if, there's, if um, Power Apps identifies itself differently to a browser or you can add additional URL parameters that you don't publicize, um, you might be able to make it a little bit more um, secure. But just bear in mind this method definitely has some caveats, but I still quite like it because if you look at the, the final effect, it's actually quite a smooth, um, uh, smooth user experience. Uh, and of course, I've picked a big PDF now, so it's going to take a while to load. Um, the only other thing, here's the other caveat with this thing. Every time I either click this drop down or I click one of these files, for example, go back to here, um, that's another flow running. So just in using this app, in what we've done, I've probably kicked off 15 or 20 flows. Now, um, the average user, if I recall, has a 2,000 per month limit on flow runs. So be careful with this. This could actually be quite expensive in terms of how much work it puts on the flow side of things. So it's probably not something you'd roll out to your users en masse. Otherwise, hopefully you found that useful and might give you some uh, ideas and tricks of your own. Thanks.